Let's talk about potions. Artists and storytellers have been using the idea of potions for a long time to tell interesting stories. We know stories where someone drinks a potion and does not get the results that they thought they would get. A potion is a magical drink that makes a change in someone, or in some cases, heals them instantly. In this book, George makes medicine out of 31 different ingredients, and something unusual happens. In Harry Potter, they also use potion to transform themselves. In the games we play, we try to mix and acquire potions to win the game. While these potions and stories are imaginary, potions themselves can be traced back into history to the early origins of modern day science, which was referred to as alchemy. Here, an artist painted an alchemist in his lab with all of his bottles and potions. When an artist focuses on the interesting objects in a room, this is called a still life. And this one has a very beautiful peppermint bottle that the artist has featured right in the center. Artists are like scientists. They have to mix colors. They have to mix formulas for glaze and many more things. To prepare for making a still life with a potion bottle, let's look at these two items. We have a shape, a circle, which is flat, and we have a three-dimensional cylinder form. When we tilt them away from us, we see a foreshortened circle. Let's study what a potion would look like in a glass. It's just like a cylinder. And in fact, the top of the glass, the top of the liquid, and the bottom of the glass are all foreshortened circles. Except here with my purple potion, the glass has a rounded bottom. So let's draw a simple potion bottle. Remember, you can pause the video if it's going too fast. I'm starting with a foreshortened circle. Looks like an oval. Now I can design my bottle. Whatever I do to the left side, I do to the right side as well because glasses are usually formed in a symmetrical way. I'm finding a point where I want my liquid level to be, and I did two dots, and I made a big foreshortened circle, or oval, between those two points. Then I rounded out the bottom. Once you like your shape, and you may need to do some erasing or redrawing, but then you can pen or marker over your lines. All right, it's time to make a potion. When you're making your potion, think about using at least two different ingredients. Here I'm using a light green oil pastel. Oil pastels are great for blending and mixing. Now I'm adding a second ingredient, a completely different color of oil pastel. Notice I'm coloring the top of the liquid and the side of the liquid. On the top of the liquid, I want that to be a little bit lighter to show that my form might have some light shining down on top. This is like a half dome form making the liquid in this bottle. And then the side of my form will be a little bit darker, like it's in shadow. So you can stop there or you can add a color to your glass. To help your glass look like a form and not a flat shape, you can add some color to the sides. I'm doing dark right along the edge and I'm lightening as I move out towards the center. This kind of sculpts my shape into tricking my eyes into my bottle looking round, cylindrical. Now I'm adding a nice fumy cloud coming out from my potion. I'm also using more than one color for the cloud. And a white oil pastel can really help you blend your colors. What a good secret ingredient. If you're older or want to try something a little bit more advanced, try a small bottle with a cork. A foreshortened circle for the top of a cork, two lines down, the front of a foreshortened circle to make the ring of your bottle, then begin your bottle shape, symmetrical on the left to the right. For your liquid surface, have your foreshortened circle come in a little bit from the sides of your glass and trace the whole bottom shape near the glass around the bottom. 
that makes it look like you really have a thickness to your glass. Just like our other bottle, I'm using a potion of more than one color. And here I'm using watercolor. While my watercolor liquid dries, I decide to color the glass. I'm gonna use a darker color around the outside, right near the line. And then I'm going to go lighter and lighter with my pressure so that the glass gets more transparent towards the middle. This starts to make my bottle form look rounder. And when my liquid is a bit more dry, I go back to the side and make it a little bit darker with one more bit of brown paint. Love this next technique. You can actually use water-based markers to add some small shapes into the liquid portion of your drawing. Remember to use more than one ingredient. Here I use some yellow and some pink. Next, get yourself some water. You can use a little bit of water to stir the pigment around and make it look like a potion. You can also mix a potion at home. If you have some dried out markers, Try putting them in water to see what happens. Over time, this red and blue made a beautiful deep indigo. If you have food coloring, enjoy watching two different colors slowly disperse in the water. And if you happen to have some vinegar, some color, and some baking soda, you can really have some fun with your potion. So have fun with your potions. You can put objects in them, you can make them smoke and bubble, and you can infuse them with whatever power your heart desires.